Now, the point being here is that, you know, these T cells right here, right? This is where, right? This is where training is happening right now, okay? This is the maturation phase that's going on, guys. All right, there's still immature phase right now, right? Selection process hasn't happened yet right now, okay? We haven't, we haven't talked about the central tolerance yet. We're still talking about the, all right, they migrated here, and this is where the process of maturation is happening. This is the process of differentiation is happening right now, right? Now, when the T cells are be based on, they will stimulate these growth factors, all right? And then what is going to happen is that these thymic epithelium will start showing some peptide, all right? What is going to happen? They will put out, they will put both, let's say this is MHC1. Let's say this, we can make this as MHC1 here, and this is MHC2 right here, okay? Basically, or maybe I'll just make this as a little different. So let's say this is showing here. And they're showing this one, okay? This is MHC1 here. Let's say this is MHC2. Uh, hold on, actually, no. So let's say in the black right here, this is showing MHC2. All right? They're showing MHC1 and MHC2. What is the importance here is that during the process, these are already naked, right? They, they have never been exposed to any of this. What is going to happen is that, you know, when these are shown, the so the MSC1 and MSC2. What is it? These guys will, okay, the TCL, TC, your T cell receptor will respond to this, all right? They respond to this, all right? Respond to this, and what is gonna happen? What is gonna happen here is that there will be a there will be a synthesis, okay. This will get converted into something called let's say this is my T cells right here, right? C D3, uh sorry, this is a T cells right here, and there's a T cell receptor right here, right? T cell receptors. And then what is going to happen? They will see it, right? And there will be processing or transduction will occur, okay? And these guys, okay? These these guys, because there is going to be a T cell receptors, transductions, right? So CD3 will stimulate the transduction process, and they will produce something called the very, very important CD4 and then CD8. CD8. Look at this. Now what is this happening here? The both of them. Now, these cells, all right, these cells, what is going to happen here is that these cells have both CD4 and CD8, all right? Now, when they both have a CD4 and CD8, what is going to happen? These cells, we call them, uh, let's say, double positive cells, Bo double positive thymocyte, okay? So, what is going to happen? When they migrate to here, they will double negative thymocyte, right? And then what is going to happen? When they started, right, based on the hormone they are secreting right here, all right, but what is going to be, they are they synthesized T cell receptors and then CD3 positive, right? And then after what is going to happen is that there is, these cells will even go further differentiated and that they will make what is called something called CD4 and CD8. In the, self, in the surface marker, they will have a CD4 and CD8. When they both, when the, these T cells, so both C4 and, uh, C4 and CD8, then we call them a double positive cells, or we call them like a desire, we can call them a, okay, this is, you can see, but this is, if you want to remember, you can call them this early pre-T cells, and this is, you can see a little late pre-T cells, okay, the pre-T cells. This becomes, after pro, it becomes pre-T cells, okay, and this is, this is getting differentiated. Now, now this MHC proteins, this thymic epithelium will show this MHC1 and MHC2. Now it will go to selection process. I'm sorry that I already mentioned this MSC1 and MSC2 to you, but now once it become pre cells, when they become pre cells, when they both have, when they have a sur surface marker C4 and CD8, that is the time, okay? That is the time when these guys will go some, these T cells will go something called the process of central tolerance, meaning a positive or negative selection. Now this time the capitalism will show this MSC1 or MSC proteins do this like double positive cells, all right? Now, now what is gonna happen here is that, let's make this, okay, let's erase this actually. This is not correct right here. Let's just say, now, when you, you know, when they, this thymic epithelium will show these guys right here, all right? The T cells, MSC1 and MSC2. What is gonna happen here? If this T cells right here, right? If the T cells right here, 
if they are able to, let's make this as, all right, I'm going to make this as T-cells right here. Are e okay, I'll make it here. This is my T-cells. If these T-cells are able to, what is going to happen? Let's say this is a hand right here. And I'm going to make another one right here. Okay, this is another one. This is going to be, let's say, this is going to be my MHC1 right here. All right. If they are, if they are, if they see, because they both are low, if they, if they, all of them have CD3, you have C4, you have C8, this is all, okay, this is a double positive, time aside. When they saw, okay, if they saw MHC1, and they are showing both MHC1 and MS2, okay, this, this is, this is showing both MHC1 and MS2. But what is going to happen is that this cell decided to, they recognize the MHC1, okay. It weakly recognizes this MSC1. If it weakly recognizes MSC1, what is going to happen is this cell, if it's weakly recognized, this cell is, is selected. This is called positive selection. Okay? If it's weakly recognized, all right, if the, this T cells weakly recognize the MSC1, then this cell, this T cells is selected, selected and it will be a positive cell. But let's say if these T cells are strongly, strongly attached or bind to the MSC1, then what is gonna happen? This, this thymic epithelium will, what happen? They will recruit, secret a product, okay? And, and product, and, the, you know, and then what is gonna happen is that that will lead into this apoptosis, all right? Obviously there's gonna be a fast ligand, and which is result in this apoptosis. Remember, important concept here. If there is a low affinity to bind with MHC1, these cells, these T cells will be selected as a cytotoxic T cells, okay? They will be C8 positive cytotoxic T cells, all right? If, and then, and what is gonna happen is that these cells, okay, they will release a product, all right? That would down-regulate the CD4 positive important concept here. If MHC1, all right guys, this is again, I'm repeating, this is a very important concept. MHC1 is weakly. If there's a low affinity bind with MHC1, okay, then what is gonna happen here is that this, this T cells will be selected as a CD8, or sort of toxic cells, and this thymic epithelium, they'll secret a product that would down-regulate the CD4 positive cells. Okay, then they'll, they'll have, these cells will be a T cells with the CD, what is it, CD, eight positive cells, and obviously they all have a CD3. And obviously there's a TC, T cell, cell receptor. Now this is gonna be, this is a positive selected, positive selected cells, okay? Now, let's say if this T cells is gonna be strongly, is strongly recognized, and if there's a high affinity, then what is gonna happen is that, they will do something called, you know, they would not like that, and they will release a product that will result into apoptosis of this, the T cells, all right? This is how they are trained, okay? These T cells are trained with our own antigen, because right now, this antigen, this MHC1 complex holding, that is our own antigen, sorry, our, our own peptide that is showing to this, to this double positive thymocyte or pre-T cell, right? Now, after this, let's say this guy right here, okay? This guy is my MHC2, okay? And what is gonna happen is that there's another T cell that comes here. Even here, they are showed both MHC1, but this guy decided to, decided to weakly bind with this MHC2 complex, right? These are another T cells right here, right? These T cells works with it. They weakly bind to the MHC2. If it's weakly bind to the MHC2, then this is positively selected. Okay? But remember, if it's positively selected, but these cells, because that is binding with MHC2, these guys will be called as a CD4 positive cells. And they will down, and these cells will produce a product that will down regular the C8 marker. Okay? Because, remember, as we said, they're gonna be either C, uh, CD4 positive cells or CD8 positive cells, all right? Now, if there is a strong, if there's a strong affinity binder of the MHC2, if the T cells, 
okay, bind strongly with the MSC2, then what is going to happen? That will lead into apoptosis, okay, of this T cell, and that is called negative selections. All right, that is called negative selections, and same thing here. If these guys are strongly bind with the MSC1, all right, these guys will go process of death, apoptosis, and that is what's called negative selections. All right, and remember, if let's say for for our case, if these these cells, this double positive thymocyte, if they don't recognize any of the let's say any of the MSC1 or MSC2 complex, even if they, if they don't recognize these cells will reduce as a product that will kill the cells. That is called negative selections. All right. So in two ways, okay. If again I'm repeating, if these T cells are strongly bind to the MSC complex, strongly or higher affinity, then this cell, epithelium, thymic epithelium, will release a product that will kill the cell. If there is no, if this, if this T cell does not recognize any of the MSC complex, these T cells will also go off the process of apoptosis, all right? Now, if MSC ones are weakly bind with this CD, what is this, CD, CD8, then they will be considered as a positive selected, okay? And they are, they are, now they can live, all right? And that we call them, a, okay, if they're positive selected and if it's down-regulated, and let's say if it's down-regulated and then now these cells, let's say the T cells, right? If the T cells only have CD8 marker and then let's say a CD3, but it does not have a CD4, then we call them, it is a positive selector, but this is what? Because it's, 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 it is, only there's only CD8 is there, CD4 is not there, so we call them a single positive. We call them STS positive, single positive cells. Okay, same thing here. MSC, if you have this T cells right here, if there's a marker of let's say CD4, but it does not have CD8, but it is CD3, all of them are gonna have CD8, and there's a TCL receptor is gonna be there, then we call them a single positive, single positive helper cells. All right. Usually, you know, we look at this, we look at this in something called fluorescent, you know. If you look at the fluorescent, let's say if you look at this, this is my fluorescent. If you look at the fluorescent right here, right? You know what is going to happen if you see abundantly amyloid present right here, okay? This abundantly present or what? This abundantly present is there usually helper cells, CD4, helper cells, right? Less usually you, you see right here, they're called like CD8 cells, CD8. So what is it? And you said this one, this is a bonding person, these are called uh, single positive cells, right? These one are single positive toxic C cells. And there is obviously, you know, there's there's a whole process of this, you know, there are other cells are going to be there too. Like for example, here we, we have to talk about something called T regulatory T cells. We have to talk about that too, right? But remember, this process is a, is a central the central tolerance, okay, positive and negative selections is there. And usually what happens when this, let's say, when this pro T cells come, it usually come at this cortical medullary junction right here, okay? And from the cortical medullary junction, it actually kind of like climb up, it goes up, up, and then a lot of this, you know, differentiations and maturation that happens in the cortex regions of the thymus. And what is gonna happen is as, as they come down here, as they come here at the cortical medullary junction, you know, they are, they are fully differentiated and fully mature, okay? And in the usually when they get in the medulla, they usually are, when they're in medulla, they're usually the signal positive sort of toxic T cells or they're signal positive like MHC2. But remember one more thing, a lot of times they're doing this process, okay? 90% of the T cells, they don't get selected. They go across the negative selection and they die, okay? Only very, very less amount of, like 10% of the T cells can survive, all right? So this is a very, very like a important selection process that happens in this area, right? And remember, thymus, this is why, like thymus is a very, very important gland in a very early development, right? In an early, if there's a problem with the thymic development, or thymic epithelium cells to develop, then again, that is gonna lead into no maturations of T cells, and if there's no T cells are present, that is gonna result into, obviously, skid, right? Severe immunocompromised disease. Because there's a really, really important 
rule of thymus here, right? Especially for the immune systems. And one more thing that I would talk about. In here, when they get, when they get in the medulla, this either a single positive cells or let's say your cytotoxic T cells, okay? There's one more thing that also happened right here. They will show something called air right here, all right? This air is referring as like our self antigens, all right? And because this is, we're talking about autoimmune, autoimmune, autoimmune response effect, all right? So what is gonna happen here is that this, this epithelium, what is this? The medullary epithelium will show an antigen to each cell, okay? And the most important thing is that if the C8 cells are able to recognize that, they'll kill it, okay? They'll kill our own cells, all right? They will kill our own cells. And if they're not able to, if they're not able to rec recognize it, that means they're able to live, okay? So the point here is that if they are able to recognize our own peptide, then what is they're gonna kill it? That is what's called autoimmune disease, all right? So this is how, okay? This is how this the last test happens in the medulla where they're showed our own peptide by this molecule, air, and this, if this, then C4, uh, CD4 positive and CD8 positive, if they don't respond to the, our own antigens, then these guys are, these guys can be able to live. Okay? And then after what is going to happen is that these guys can come and where they can go? These guys can come and go to the, their secondary lymphoid organ. Like for example, they can go to, if they're like, the, if they're, this is a, if this is a lymph node, alright? Usually, there's a cortex and there's a paracortex, right? Usually, T cells are abundantly present in paracortex of your lymph nodes right here, right? The T cells house. And then if there's a spleen, there's something called like white, something called white pulp. This is where you see, you know, your T cells are sitting there, right? And not only there, there are also like all those like new, you know, Mucosa-associated lymph nodes, lymphoid tissues, right? Gut-associated lymphoid tissues, all of them. These are all or pear patches too, all right? This is where you actually found those T cells, locations of the T cells, all right? And whenever their reserve are sitting around this this area, you know, we call them, these are, these are, they, these are marginated. These T cells are marginated. And they're always, this B, B, uh, B cells, the T cells, they're always moving back and forth from there the secondary lymphoid organs and also uh, and from the blood all right the way they get here from the cd8 the way they get to this all this area is through the lymphoid okay lymphoid vessels lymphoid vessels but if they need to go to the like, let's say in spleen they usually go through the blood all right and blood that's how they get to the spleen but the lymphoid lymphoid nodes the pear patches they will the uh, the lymph vessels will take this this cell and they will go and reserve there, all right? And now I have to one, I have to tell you one more thing, all right? And that is something called, during this process right here, the, the, this, the selection, right? When the CD4 positive were selected, right? What is also happened there, the sum of the cells, you know, during the process, when they get, when they're strongly bound with the MSC, they're not, what is gonna happen is that they're gonna go something called, they're gonna die, right? They, they'll, they'll process. They'll have a process apoptosis. But what is gonna happen? There are so, there are some cells, you know. They will survive, okay. And those cells, right, survive after the negative selections, okay. Those cells are those T cells are called T regulatory cells, all right. And they will have a clinical markers of CD3, CD4. They will have, all right. They will have that, but also they have like the CD25, all right. The importance of this T regulatory is that they're regulating the T cells, all right? This is really, really important. The T regulatory cells regulates the T cells, all right? And they have the markers like C25, C4, and the CD3, all right? It is, they do, they do display CD4, all right, guys? But they also have the CD25 and the T regulatory protein. And these guys selected to leave some of them some of them during this process, they are negatively selected, they're supposed to die, but they do not, and they're classified as a T-regulatory cells, all right? Now, 
always, whenever we talk about the T cells, okay, there are four different types of T cells we always have to talk about, okay. Two are most important, and that is the CD8 and CD4. They have a different functions, okay, and we'll talk about that right now. And other thing is that you also have to remember the T regulatory cells, okay, T helper cells. And other cells that you have to remember here is that memory T cells, okay, and we'll talk about that there whenever we talk about the, you know, when they're present to the antigens. Now, before we go there, okay, I have to talk about one more concept here. The T cells that, you know, that this, the medulla, the C8 positive cells, C4 cells, these are positively selected cells, right? These are single positively selected cells because they only have a one marker there, which is C4 or CD8, all right? If they have only one marker, either C4 or C8, we call them single positive T cells, okay? But these single positive T cells are not fully, are not activated T cells. They're mature T cells, but we cannot call them our activated T cells. Okay, we call them, all right, let's write down here. We call the T cells, okay? This is a T cells right here, okay? Those T cells are TH, but these are naive T cells, all right? Naive T cells. This naive T cells is the one that is circulating around all this area in, the, in your blood, in your lymph nodes. These guys would only get activated, okay, and become like, let's say, the other type of T cells, like T helper one, all right? When they, exposed to the antigens, all right? These naive T cells are mature T cells, but they're not activated T cells. This is something that you have to remember. So again, the, from the bone marrow, it's a pro T cell that get migrated to thymus. This is where the receptors, the rearrangement of receptors, the T cell receptors are going to happen. After the rearrangement of the T cell receptors, what is gonna happen here is that there is a, there is a, there is a, this cell will go the process of differentiations and that will result into, okay, there's a two marker, C4 and C8 marker and obviously CD3, which is a single transduction on the surface of the T cells, all right? And after that, when they're show, there will be a, okay, they're, they're gonna show this epithelium, thymic epithelium, all right? They're gonna show MSC1 and MSC2, okay? And this MSC1 and MSC2 have an antigen, antigen within them, all right? Because remember, T cell only responds to peptide. It is a very, very important concept, okay? And they will only respond if they are, if they're attached to the MHC1 complex, okay? If, if, the, if the MHC1 complex, if, the, if, if there is this MHC complex one or two are not present, okay? And antigen are not displayed in this complex, the T cell would not recognize, okay? That is why. We often say that T cells are MHC restrictors, the MHC restrictions, okay? Because they only recognize the peptide that is located in the either MHC1 and MHC2. When we, we, when we talk about synthesis of the, how the MHC1 and, MHC, MHC1 and MHC2, then we'll discuss more about how this works actually, all right? But right now, just know that T cells only recognize the peptide, okay? And, and peptide, that are very, very small. Right? Like for example, MHC1, they can only hold because it looks something like this. There is a, you know, there's a, obviously these guys are also made out of alpha chains and then beta chains, all right? Alpha 1 and alpha 2, there's alpha 1 and beta 1, all right? And it's very, very important concept here, right? So basically this MHC1 are made out of this alpha 1 and alpha 2, all right? So what is going to happen here is that these guys, and they were able to hold this alpha one and alpha two in the in the in the group. There's a group where this these antigens are actually present there. Okay, and these T cells will recognize that, right? So that's how they will they in a very very early on they would train like that. All right. Now the importance of this is that the the importance of this is that you know if the MHC one in if the antigens are present in MHC one. The peptides are present and they have very, very small amino acids. Like for example, maybe eight to 10 amino acids, okay? And because that's the only they can hold, right? And if you look at the MSC2, they'll probably have from like 13, like 20 amino acids, a little bigger compound, right? So, so because they are, because the, right now they're exposing something in a very early phase. So later also, they'll only recognize, okay, whenever there's a foreign bacteria pathogen come, they'll only recognize the peptides, okay? If they, if MHC1 complex is holding the, 
peptide, they only recognize uh, uh, the amino acids that that is small, like eight to ten amino acid. If you're talking about the MHC one, if you're talking about MHC two, you're talking about like thirteen to like twenty amino acids. All right, it is a very very important concept, guys. And this is how they're very early on trained, all right? And the concept of the MHC restriction, I just mentioned to you guys about it too, all right?